Welcome back. In the previous video called reference point versus reference model, um, I believe I made it clear that reference model based adaptive control or so-called model reference adaptive control is better than reference point based adaptive control. Um, so moving forward, I would of course would like to go with the better selection. So I would like to focus on model reference adaptive control um, idea approach. And before we move into higher dimensional systems, I need to teach you two important topics. And one of them is projection operator. All right, what is a projection operator? Basically, here is its definition. <clears throat> it is a tool to guarantee boundedness of the closed loop system trajectories when in the stability analysis, you cannot arrive with that less than equal to zero. And if you cannot apply, obtain that, you cannot also apply Barbalas lemma. And uh, what to do? And similar to projection operator, another uh, tool to address when you don't have V dot less than or equal to zero is called leakage modification. Stay tuned for the next video. And I am going to compare advantages of projection operator versus leakage modification um, as well, so that you will understand everything uh, clearly. All right. <coughs> <coughs> I apologize for my voice. All right. So. As we discussed um, in the previous videos, before we move forward to higher dimensional systems, we are looking at this system. What is different than previous videos is that here we have a time varying uncertainty. Our uh, control law is the same. Here is the nominal control law, UN, which is X minus C. And this is the adaptive control law, estimation of the unknown weight multiplied by x. Um, since we are considered a reference model based design or model reference adaptive control, here is the reference model from the previous video. So basically, once you put this control signal into this system, you are going to obtain this equation, w tilde is w hat minus w, if you remember from the previous videos. Now, I am writing the error dynamics, x minus the reference model state, xr. Then we arrive this. Um, I didn't provide the uh, intermediate steps here because uh, we derived this error dynamics in the previous video. Now, first, I am going to use the same parameter uh, update law, uh, which results in W tilde dynamics, which is um, w hat dot this term minus w dot because w is no longer constant in the previous video this was zero because w was constant this is not the case here and basically if you uh, use this Lipanov function candidate and perform the same steps we performed in the previous video you are going to arrive this negative term and this one so in the previous video, basically reference point versus reference model, we didn't have this term because W dot was zero. However, um, because we have this term and this term can take, right, this multiplication can be plus or negative, so it is sign indefinite, we cannot say V dot is less than or equal to zero. So this is exactly what I meant by this. Projection operator, along with leakage modification to be covered in the next video, is one of the tools that to guarantee boundedness of the closed loop system trajectories when we cannot arrive with that less than or equal to zero, like in this case. So we are not going to use this. We are going to modify the parameter update law with a projection operator. Let's dive into details. All right, so I will try to explain these things in plain terms so that everyone should be able to understand. Let me try. Instead of using w hat dot equals to gamma multiplied by xe, I am going to use here the projection operator. What is a projection operator? Basically, 
This notation means that we are using Xe to train, to drive the estimation W hat, but we are also projecting W hat, meaning that um, we are applying projection to W hat, which is based on this input that we receive. Mathematically speaking, or more clearly speaking, here is the definition. First of all, let's say you have a W min and W max, such that your actual time varying uncertainty lives over this domain. Then W max is the, um, it can be conservative, an upper bound on this uncertainty and here is the lower bound then projection operator has basically if w hat is greater than w max minus epsilon this is the projection tolerance and if x e is less is greater than zero meaning that let's say your w hat reaches here and basically you reach, you exceeded this W max minus epsilon bound and XC X multiplied by E is positive, meaning that you are moving toward this upper limit. Then basically this decreases the learning process. For example, let's assume the worst case scenario when W max equals to W hat, meaning that your W hat hits here then um, this term becomes zero so your adaptation stops so adaptation this projection operator think of this is kind of a fancy saturation operator it won't let it won't let your w hat estimate to exceed this domain likewise if w hat is less than w min plus epsilon meaning that your w hat estimate is um, on this region and if x multiplied by e is less than zero meaning that you are going to basically hit to w min limit then this also stops the adaptation again consider the worst case scenario let's say w hat equals w min you are here this becomes zero so adaptation stops so uh, let me also mention that if you are on, over this domain, let's say W hat takes values from here, then basically W hat dot equals to gamma X E. Otherwise, then yes, you are using the exactly the same um, parameter update law. Uh, so the purpose of, once again, projection operator is to keep W hat bonded such that you are not allowed to exceed these mean and max limits all right so i have i hope this is clear i have i have two assumptions first of all here we are assuming that w this time in uncertainty lives on this domain right if basically your uncertainty cannot be greater than this domain otherwise your adaptation will be meaningless and we are also going to assume w dot is bonded this is not a big deal and i have ways to relax this um, condition um, i'm not going to discuss this this is needed for technical details in the stability proof but this is needed for implementation now before i move forward i would like to mention the following remark if you have watched um, one of the earlier videos in this series um, to adapt or not to adapt video, I mentioned when I was discussing fixed gain control laws that, you know, this, these fixed gain control laws like robust control laws requires the knowledge of the upper bound on the uncertainty W. Later in the to adapt or not to adapt example in the MATLAB example video that I did, I demonstrated that performance of the closed loop system changes as you change this fixed gain. So here we don't have an identical case because I would like to discuss these three dots. First of all, um, 
as you are going to see in the one of the later videos if you ch you know if your uncertainty is let's say this is minus 1 this is 1 if your uncertainty is you know changing between minus 1 and minus uh, 1 and you don't need to precisely know these w min and w max upper bounds in fact you can even choose 1000 and 1000 so um in this case, basically, you know, you can be as conservative as possible. Um, so, however, in the to adapt or not to adapt example, you saw that, you know, if we basically tune the fixed gain controller based on this upper bound, and if we make different selections, this will affect the performance. I am going to demonstrate that even if you choose these bonds tight, meaning that let's say your uncertainty lives in here and here and you are tightly choosing this or your uncertainty lives here you are making a conservative choice and you are choosing let's say minus 10 to 10 your, your performance will not get affected here we are basically using projection operator to keep the w hat estimate bonded because this is needed in the stability proof all right so that's not bad if you really don't have if you really don't know this minimum and maximum values just be conservative and use larger values in the implementation which you are go going to need because these w min and w max are appearing here and you are going to implement if you want to implement a projection operator all right before i dive forward I would like to mention about a, an important projection property, which is this holds. Why do we care? Because we are going to use this property in the stability proofs and in, in, in this is used in most of the research papers and technical reports. We need this property. So let's prove this property, right? All right. I would like to first mention, I would like to call this case one. If this happens, case two, if this happens, and case three, x e otherwise. Easiest case is x three, so I would like to um, look at case three. If you insert otherwise part, if you insert here x e case three, then this term will cancel out with this term, so you are going to obtain zero. So you are going to obtain the zero part from case three. Perfect. We are done with case three. Now let's look at case one. First of all, you have this one. Now I am inserting this into here since we are looking at case one. Now, if you group um, these terms under the same um, denominator, you are going to have the term inside this brackets. Now, case one happens if you are here, right? You X W head estimate exceeds this epsilon boundary and moving towards W max. So we are here. Um, first of all, W hat minus W is positive. Why? Because your uncertainty, um, you are here and your uncertainty lives in this interval. It, as this being said, I apologize. I would like to make a little correction here um, that I, for, I forgot to do. Plus epsilon W max minus epsilon. This is the assumption that your uncertainty needs to live. Again, you can choose W min and W max uh, as um, larger constraints. So, okay, let's correct this. Why we need to correct this? Uh, I was writing uh, maybe that part a little bit fast. Now, case one is activated when you are here. So your uncertainty must live on this domain such that your W hat minus the actual, actual uncertainty has a positive sign since it lives here. This is the one you need to have a positive sign here. Now, let's give some numbers. W max, let's give one. 
let's choose epsilon to be 0.1, why not, such that this, this number becomes 0 0.9. And let's say your uncertainty that we had estimate is here, um, which let's say 0 0.95. If we insert these numbers, W max is 1 minus 0 0.95 minus um, 0 0.1, you are going to have a negative term here. So once your parameter estimation here, you are going to have a negative term. And this case is activated when Xe is positive, so this is positive. So if you multiply something positive with negative and positive, you are going to get negative. So we have this from case one. Now let's move into case two, w hat minus w. Now I am inserting this one here. First of all, for case three, case two to be activated, your w hat must be here, and your uncertainty lives in here. So w hat, let's say, minus 0 0.95, and your actual uncertainty, let's say, 0. 8 uh, minus 0 0.8 minus 0 0.95 minus minus 0 0.8 this term will be negative once again you can give some numbers this was 0 0.9 minus 0 0.95 let's say w mean to be minus 1 and this was 0 0.1 so you have here basically minus 0 0.95 minus minus 1 minus 0 0.1 if you sum them up, basically minus 0 0.95 plus 1 minus 0 0.05 minus 0 0.1, you are going to have a term with minus sign. Now, case 2 is activated when xe is less than 0, so this term is also negative. Negative multiplied by negative is plus, multiplied by negative is negative, so you have this portion. Wow. All right, so... Um, you should do this analysis for yourself. Basically, um, all I am trying to say here, this property holds with the projection operator. By the way, there are also other um, smoother selections for the projection operator. More precisely, this is called rectangular projection operator. Um, I used, um, based on my experience, I used this projection operator versus its smoother versions but i like this projection operator because it happened to be more robust uh, in handling um, uncertainties and um, there are also projection operators that requires symmetric lower and upper bounds here it can be basically this projection operator handles asymmetric uh, uh, projection bounds as well so this is another nice fact and uh, basically this projection operator worked better in my research and applications of adaptive control theory that I performed as compared to others. So without loss of generality, I would like to cover this, but I just wanted to mention that you should be aware there are other types of projection operators. They all guarantee this. All right, so now um, stability proof, right? We need to discuss stability properties. Um, e dot is this now with the projection operator this is w hat dot minus w dot i am considering this lipanov function candidate and taking uh, its derivative this this is basically e e dot term and this is basically w tilde w tilde dot term um, i am first grouping this term these two terms in here in the second step now does this look familiar yes it is it is basically by the projection operator it is less than or equal to zero so that in the next step we can get rid of it we are finding its upper bound so we end up having these two terms uh, does not look very um, complicated but I would like to be very rigorous, very system theoretically correct. Um, so I would like to show you all steps because, you know, some, several of you may be just watching these videos for implementation of adaptive control. I just would like to implement. So you can stop the video and go ahead and implement adaptive controller that I just showed you. If you believe in this proof, you should. Um, 
some people some of you may be using for research purposes so you may want to dive into more details so that you will learn and maybe generalize these concepts to your research needs so i need to cover all the details all right we are here basically this step is particularly important i, I would like to mention about this because if w dot is zero then you have this which is less than or equal to zero so even with the projection operator you can apply Barbalas lemma and you can recover um, asymptotic stability of the error dynamics uh, with the projection operator when w dot is zero. Um, so this is the nice part of the projection operator, right? Um, you, basically, you can recover when w dot, let's say, you know, it may be time varying, but after some time W dot is zero, you can recover asymptotic error convergence. This is actually actually a very important point to make. To, to move forward in analysis, let's assume it is not zero. It is bounded by some constant. So I am applying, applying Young's inequality to this term. Basically, here is Young's inequality. A, B is basically upper bounded by this for some arbitrary positive constant D0. So from here you obtain this by you applying Young's inequality. Now, if you expand these terms, you arrive here. Now I am going to add and subtract this term. Here D2 is a positive constant. And um, basically if you group the terms, these are the negative nice terms that you have and d3 is basically the rest here i would like to mention that based on the projection operator right uh, w w hat is bonded now w tilde w hat minus w this is bonded this is bonded by the projection operator so w tilde is bonded so there always exists a constant upper bond to this w tilde i use this to upper bound this term and this term, which you see here and here. So to simplify the notation, I just called all these terms D3 given here. So we have these nice negative terms plus this positive T3. Moving forward, I am going to use the comparison principle. This comparison, comparison principle is first covered this Lyapunov stability and more lectures on advanced control systems. Um, close to the end of that video, basically it is saying that if you obtain a form like V dot less than or equal to some, posit some positive theta 1 multiplied by the Lyapunov function plus some positive beta 2, then V, solution to this V is upper bounded by this function. Um, I am, if you haven't watched, watched this video as well, it is an important, I, I believe it is a very condensed and very precise video that covers most of the stuff that you need to know about deep and stability analysis. So moving forward, you have this upper bound, which equals to now, I am going to here multiply and divide by two, likewise multiply by two gamma and divide by two gamma, because I would like to define d4 as the minimum of this or this to upper bound that with v. And this portion of v and that portion of v constructs um, basically our Lyapunov function that we consider at the beginning. So spend some time to understand, you know, this is this is really upper bounding upper bounding this portion of the equation this is a very crucial step actually um which you know if you think a little bit you will uh, understand or several of you may already understood so we arrive to this structure basically the structure that we would like to have to apply comparison principle so basically we now have this r v which contains E and W tilde, right, in here, is upper bounded by E to the power of minus D, D4, T, plus D3, D4, by the way, it is the initial condition of the uh, Lyapunov equation, meaning that as T goes to infinity, our Lyapunov function converges to D3 over D4, 
basically this term converges to d3 over d4, meaning that our closed loop system trajectories, um, including E and W tilde, are bounded with this being the final uh, ultimate bound. As I just mentioned, if W dot was zero, then from this step, we would obtain this, which, which implies that V dot is less than or equal to zero. And then you can apply Barbalas lemma as we, as I applied in the previous videos to, to conclude error going to zero, ST going to infinity, meaning that it is possible to recover asymptotic convergence when you use projection operator. Uh, for some duration, your w, you know, w may be time varying. If it approaches the constant, great. You recover asymptotic stability, which is better than boundedness. All right. Thanks.